So it's about that time of the week where I answer all of your questions. Now, if you're new around here and you want to learn more about DJing and you want to ask me a question, hit me up on Instagram in the DMs at Ben Rainey and I'll answer your questions. So every week, rather than try and reply to everybody, I'm just going to do a weekly Q&A now. Um, I think it's easier because then the videos are on there for everyone to see and it's going to be completely transparent off the cuff. You can probably see there, hopefully, I've got everybody's questions on my phone. Um, so I'm just going to go with it and I'm just going to answer as many questions in 10, 15 minutes as I can. Um, and then the main question, which I think is the most um, interesting slash helpful is going to be the title of the video which will obviously hopefully get you guys clicking on the videos um, but I think once you've been around here for a while you'll realize it's more of a quick off the cuff question and answer rather than like a 20 minute video like trying to you know explain everything um, I will do obviously more in depth videos but I think it's better for me at the minute just to give you guys as much content as I can so Let's get into the questions, and question number one is from Charlie Price, House Music. Just want to say, Charlie Price, you are a legend, and I love what you're doing, mate. If anybody's not on to Charlie Price Instagram, you'll be on the screen now. Check him out, he's a legend. Charlie put, how did you get your first gig, like, even when you haven't got fast laptop or CDJs? So, I didn't have a fast laptop, and I didn't have CDJs, and my first gig was actually in my rugby coach's back garden on a hay bale. If I can, I'm going to put the photo on the screen now. I, do, I don't know if I've still got it. I probably have still got it, so I'm probably going to find it and put it on the screen now. And if you've seen that photo right now, you'll realise it was nothing special. I was... Well, I say it was nothing special. It was a great moment. I mean, the setup was nothing special. It was um, in my rugby coach's back garden on a hay bale, playing to about 30 people. Not many of them was actually listening. But they're the kind of gigs which will actually build your character and build your understanding of what to play, when to play. Because, you know, bedroom DJ is one thing and playing to your wall in your bedroom where you think you're mixing amazing is great. But actually, when you put live people and an environment into it, I think that's when it becomes real um, and even though there wasn't that many people listening or dancing it was still like fun to do do you know what I mean it was still a good experience you know people still enjoyed it it just wasn't like the vibe it wasn't a party as such it was more of like a, a get together and um, so that was how I built my first steps was I started DJing in people's gardens parties um, pre-drinks you know even yeah just just parties basically and I think that's a great step for people to get into it is Start local and um, build with the people that are around you and word of mouth, you know, like people say about social media now, but honestly, everything starts organically from word of mouth. Um, you might look at someone like me now and think, oh, he's getting like, you know, a lot of online engagement, a lot of people interested in what he's doing, but it he never honestly started like that. Like nobody that you're watching who might be your favorite DJ probably started with what you've got now. Um, so probably probably just don't compare and just get stuck in and be willing to DJ for other people anywhere, anytime. So a nice one for that question, Charlie. And I'm, I'm just actually going to put my desk up a little bit. Are you ready? All right, there we go. Um, cause I felt like I was lent down a little bit. Um, so now I can, I'm kind of just like lent on my desk, but I'm stood up. Um, there's another little tip for any DJs and producers, try and get a standing sit desk. Um, this is great for me cause my computer screen's there. Camera's obviously on the side, got a little light up here and I'm just kind of able to switch and do different things. I've got a chair not behind me, just to the side. I can just sit down. I can bring the table back down. Oi, oi, look at that. Um, and obviously, let me just put it back up where I need it. And obviously, there's a lot of... <laughs> and obviously, there is a lot of um, health benefits to having a standing sitting desk. So yeah, try and get a standing sitting desk. Um, question from Simon Elijah underscore. I think that's your name. I hope I've spelled that right, mate. Um, Tips on mixing different keys. Now, this is a really good question. Um, so what he's referring to is like, obviously every song that you DJ or produce has a key, which is um, a keys like A minor, you know, A major, C major, C minor. So every key, every song's in a different key, you know, when different songs sound different or more importantly, when certain songs sound the same, that's because they're in the same key. Um, and there's this whole debate about should you be mixing in key or what? And I think it's a really interesting topic. And for me, I think my theory on it is, is if you mix in two massive, you know, piano house tracks or two massive uh, vocals and they're in completely different keys, yes, it probably is going to sound a bit weird. But if you're mixing like extended long tracks like Tech House or Disco, where it's like, you know, you, you're building the drums in before any like new bass line comes in, you probably don't actually need to mix in key because you're not mixing two 
musical elements together. You're just mixing two sets of drums, which unless you're an Albert Einstein of music, you're probably not going to realize that in the same key. Um, so I would say, you know, run your tracks through record box um, and that will give you the Camelot or the classic key, which is basically a signature to show you. Um, I'm going to put on the screen now a Camelot wheel, which will help everybody watching this video who's into music, DJ and theory, whatever. Um, a Camelot wheel will, will show you, and you can see on the screen now, um, which minor and major go together so you can actually mix two different sets of tracks so like i can't see my camelot wheel because it's far in the corner of my room probably needs to be a lot closer but say for example um two and a minor key and a major key next to each other on this um camelot wheel you can actually mix them together and they will sound syncopated as if they're in key because they're relative keys relative minor major a lot of people on here probably know a lot more about music theory than me but that's one thing I do know. And then there's also like opposite ends of the circle. You can still mix them. So just experiment with it. But honestly, I wouldn't look too far into this whole key situation. I'd probably just um, use your ears. You know what I mean? Once you start started DJing, I think this is one thing I'll always say is I'm not great at music theory, but I know how to use my ears <laughs> most times anyway. Um, I've probably done some debatable mixes. Um, this is a really good question. DJ.Zach underscore legend, bro. Thank you for you know, engaging with this. What was the main factor throughout your career that's made you who you are today? Um, I would say the main thing for me, and I think people that know me and people that have watched me long enough will agree, is I'm just myself. Like, um, you could look at a social media account and see X amount of followers and a blue tick and think that somebody is something they're not. And for me, I've always just kept it organic. Like, I'm just a lad from Hull, uh, Yorkshire lad, big up the Yorkshire crew, <laughs> um, that just loves music, loves making music, loves DJing, loves performing. I just like putting smiles on people's faces, and I think I've always maintained that throughout, no matter when I've, you know, been selling courses or, you know, selling sample packs, merchandise. I've always just been myself. I'm not trying to sell you a dream. I'm just being me. Um, and making it work for me. And I think that's why people buy into what I do. I'd like to think, I hope so. Either that or they're just, I don't even know what, bored millionaires have got so much money and just spend it on, waste it on me. But yeah, I think I've always just kept it real, like Ian Beale. Um, and I've always just been me. I've always had, added my personality into what I do. And I think that's a massive thing is all this whole imposter syndrome. Whilst I do still struggle with imposter syndrome and I do understand it, I do feel it. Um, I think because I know deep down I'm being myself, even though I sometimes get anxiety about putting content out, um, I just think, well, if you like me for me, then great. And to be honest, I get 99% positive comments on everything I do. You always get the odd Karen or Sharon that don't enjoy what you do. But yeah, I get a lot of positivity. And because of that, I feel like it allows me to keep being myself. Um, so I would always say just be yourself. Like, you know, you get a lot of big DJs and then you see other people trying to be like them and, I've done it in the past, I'm not going to lie, I've tried to be other people, but I think now I've hit a really good level of just, just being myself. So yeah, organic, um, being yourself, show your personality and what you do, because I know so many DJs as well that I don't have a clue who they are, what they look like, what they sound like, where they're from, what the background is, What not that you need to know everything about their life, but I think personality always wins. So yeah, be yourself and do your thing. Um, what is the next question? Tom Jr. DJ, being a big fan of how you've grown your fan base, any advice on best strategies? Right, so Tom, I'm not going to try and upsell something right now, but I am currently writing a blueprint on how to grow your fan base organically the way I have. Um, I realized the other day through different platforms, emails, you know, downloading my music on SoundCloud, I've grown like 150,000 fans in two years on certain platforms which i'll show you in that blueprint um but i'm not gonna that's just i'm not trying i feel like i'm trying to sell something now but i'm not i'm just saying there is something coming and i think that's a really long question um which i know i can help a lot of people with because i've literally grown my brand off my own back i've got no manager or no agent no money like thrown into me no major labels or anything um so yeah i think the best way to start is uh best strategy the one thing I will say to all DJs and producers, if you're giving out free music or if you're giving out sample packs, whatever, you need to be collecting something back in terms of that, like email address or a mobile number, pro probably an email address. Um, build an email list, MailChimp, Klaviyo, um, Sendinblue. There's loads of like free options um, and there's loads of videos online on how to grow a mailing list, which I won't go into right now. 
but get data because at the end of the day, if you've got a thousand email addresses and you release a track and they've already been downloading your free music, they're more likely to be interested than cold calling everybody on your Facebook account and tagging all your family and friends in a track who aren't really that interested. So yeah, build a audience. That's what I'd say is like, I've built an audience on, and the thing is as well, my audience is so spread out. Like none of my platforms, I would say are globally viral. Like my YouTube's at 40 something thousand as I do this video, my Instagram's to be fair, my Instagram's getting pretty big, 90,000. My TikTok's just started at 10,000 in three weeks, which is another story. Um, I've got a massive mailing list because I've sent a lot of free music out as you probably are all here today because you've heard my music. Um, so yeah, I would just say build outwards and don't focus on one platform. I know everyone says focus on one platform, but I think this everyone's got a different use. Uh, so yeah, good question, Matt. Um, Tico Cooper one, I think I've spelled that right, mate. And I'm, if I haven't, I'm really sorry, my my as a as a Yorkshire English man, my English is terrible. <laughs> my pronunciations, my spelling, everything. I'm I'm not dyslexic, but I might as well be. Um, and no offense to anybody that is. I don't mean to take the mick. I I have got <laughs> other things that affect my brain, but not. I don't actually think I'm dyslexic, but I might as well be. Um, so, how do you make your piano house chords? Which notes sound right? And what is your favorite piano plugin? You've asked me two questions, but I'm going to answer them both in one. Um, so, I'm probably most known for piano house, and an interesting fact is I don't actually play the piano um, and I actually know so many producers that make piano house that don't know how to play the piano um, and the reason we can do this is because of the uh, because of the tools and the skill set we have on music production in the box which means on the computer or the laptop um, I personally like I said earlier about the DJ and key I understand music from an ear point of view and a lot of musicians will agree with this is like no sorry not a lot of musicians a lot of producers will agree that you don't actually have to be a musician to write music. Does that make sense? Because theoretically, there is only so many skills and chords and keys that can happen. So if you know how to draw in a chord into Ableton or Logic, like in the piano roll, you can go on Google and find a set of chords. Like you can use MIDI packs, you can use a scalar tool in Ableton, um, and you just know what sounds right, and then you can play around and move, and you can start inverting and stuff. There's so many ways of doing it, and that, that again, it's quite a complex question, but... Theoretically, for me, I always aim to use minor or major sevenths or nines, which makes which bleh, which makes a basic chord sound a lot better than it already was. Um, I always aim to have like a sub layer. So, like if you've got your chords are here on you know the, on the piano roll, the C two, C three. So I might have my chords like the four, like the you'll have the triad, which is the first three chords of every. Um, sorry, the first three notes of every chord, and then you might have the major seventh, which is above it. But then I'll also invert another one a, a layer below it so it's got like a, a sub in the piano i'll then obviously scale that back in eq but i'll it gives it just gives it more width and volume um so yeah use using skills like that um my favorite piano plugin at the minute is called true pianos but i also like addictive keys m1 nexus um Aturia, piano Victor. You, bro do you know what i like them all honestly like there's different piano sounds for different tracks um Lee Wonkuk has asked me, do you do any one-to-one -one DJ lessons in Liverpool? Uh, no, DM me when you're next in Liverpool. Um, I am in Liverpool a lot because I DJ there a lot. I don't actually live nowhere near Liverpool. I live like two and a bit hours away, but it just seems that my music and my friends and the promoters that I work with all seem to be in Liverpool because I think the house music scene in Liverpool is pretty big. Um, well, it is because I'm there all the time. So in terms of one-to-one -one lessons, I, I did originally start doing that at the beginning of lockdown, but basically... Um, I'm awful at time management and I kept having to like mess around like cancelling people or moving things around and I also found that doing a one-to-one -one lesson I could only give somebody an hour of my time whereas if I was to sit down and record a six-hour course I can give it to a million people if I wanted to um, so I actually do it all online now and I've got a beginner's DJ course which um, it will be in the link below <laughs> I've lost my train of thoughts and will be in the link below um, and I've also got more courses coming. I'm literally writing more courses and that's another reason why I'm doing Q&As rather than stupidly long videos. Um, so yeah, there's more, more content coming. So you'll enjoy that. Uh, let's get on to the next question. Ooh. Uh, Rene Lavan Lavanchi. Rene M. Lavanchi has asked me, what's your tip for mastering beat matching by ear? I find it hard sometimes to tell which track's faster. That's such a good question and that is something I've covered in the courses. I'd, honestly, I'm not... I really feel like I'm trying to sell a course, but I'll just tell you everything. Like, I, I, if I could give my courses away for free, 
and and making an income wasn't an issue by the way i would do everything for free i've already said that to so many people and that is not to try and sound like the good guy it's just simply that i don't like actually selling things but at the end of the day we all have to make income which is why i sell everything so cheap because i just i just want people to be able to access it and um, but in terms of beat matching by ear what i would say is if you're using a laptop move it out the way if you're using cdjs cover the um bpm with a piece of paper and then i'd also you know you can go right or left with it so you could be trying to speed the track up to match the other track or you could be trying to slow it down and i think once you just keep doing that organically you just learn like for me now if i'm like clanging a mix which means basically doing a shit mix i know which way i need to do it without even thinking i think you end up in autopilot which a lot of djs will probably agree with like once you've been djing for a certain amount of time it does become quite autopilot -y. um which again is why I'm always trying to evolve and learn more things. So not only am I learning for myself, I can then go and teach you guys. So yeah, I would say um, just honestly keep practicing. It doesn't happen overnight. It's like riding a bike or driving a car. You're never going to learn instantly, but once you do learn, the gratitude and the appreciation for it is going to be there. Uh, Noel, Noel Catering has asked me, what is your favorite song? This could go so many ways. Um... My favourite all-time song is Luther Vandross, Never Too Much. My favourite house record is... Ooh... That is a, oh, it's At Night, Kid Krem Kid Kid Krem remix of At Night by Shakedown, which is an old-school house song. And my favourite, like, non-housey, non-anything song is probably The Temptations Treat Her Like a Lady. Um, treat her like a lady treat her like a lady <laughs> that is a banger um, I've had a few people saying what's your number and are you single but I'm not even going to entertain these kind of messages but I am going to let you know that these are coming through just, just so I look cool but there's only like a couple <laughs> uh, Luke Cross best place to get popular DJ music and tracks do you want to know my best advice for getting new music and it's not even a DJ pool Go on 1001tracklist.com. It will be put on the screen now. And go and listen to your favorite DJ sets and it'll give you the full track list. That is the best advice I'll give you. So, for example, I love like James Hype, Joel Corey, David Penn, um, so many people. And I'll just go on there and just find their track list. And also, it gives you like a SoundCloud link in the. In, so, it'll give you the track and then it'll give you the SoundCloud link. So, you can literally listen to it straight away and be like, Oh, I like that track from his set. I don't like that one. So he might do a, someone might do a, a set of 20 songs. You can go through it in five minutes and pick the five songs that you like. Do that 10 times, you've got 50 new tracks. Boom. That is a big, big tip. I've just given my golden source away there of where I get new music from. None of this DJ pool, none of this beat port. Get on track listing. Get the favorite DJs in there. Go through them super quick. Find the tracks you like. Go through 20 DJs and make your own set from all their tracks and then mash it up. Pondy replay in Bosh, boom, you've made your own set list. Get up. Now send me 20 pound, 20, 20, send me 20 pound via PayPal for that tip because that is golden knowledge, my sir. <laughs> I went on one there, didn't I? I don't know why. Um, this is a funny question. Alex Kersh has asked me, any advice on what to do during the middle of a mix instead of just standing there? I think I'm the prime example of somebody that not to ask that question because anybody that's watched my mixes will know. I just stand around and I'm just like, oi oi, oi oi, oi oi, just dancing around. Um, I find it awkward myself, to be honest, when you're doing a mix because I think, you know, you can either be super over enthusiastic like dancing or you can be too engaged in the decks. And I'm somewhere in the middle where I like, I'll zoom in, I'll be focusing on the decks for like 30 seconds. Um, thinking about the next song or how I'm going to mix it in, and then I like forget that I'm recording a, a like if a set or I'm in a club. Um, whereas other people are like the opposite, and they're just constantly like, "Yeah, woo, let's go," and then like they're not really looking like they're actually f doing anything. Um, but then some DJs just keep the head down. So I feel like probably realistically, I'm at the right place of you know keep your head up, engage with people or engage with whatever. If you're enjoying the song, do a little boogie like I do, but also maybe don't overdo it and just be like. Because I feel like, to be honest, when I first started doing live streams, I was massively overdoing it. And that wasn't because I'm a I'm a whopper. Well, I am a whopper, but it was more because I was too thinking about being filmed. I don't know if anyone else feels that. Like, when you're recording, like, even now, I'm like, 
moving around a bit because I'm recording a video. Whereas realistically, if I was just looking at my screen and I wasn't doing anything, I probably wouldn't have much emotion about me. Um, so it is, it is difficult. I think I think you just got to find the fine line. Um, Emmanuel Malaquis, I hope I spelled that right. Um, what software do you use to produce music? Simple answer, mate. Ableton. I think that's the best all-round software. I know that Logic's good. I know that you know the, the EDM boys use Fruity Loops, but Ableton for me is just the best software. Um, Ash Spencer, how where do I learn to produce? Obviously, bro, you learn with me. Do you know I've got courses on? <laughs> I'm saying this again. I've got courses. I've got courses online. Do you know what I mean? But I'm actually going to do a complete beginner's guide to music production. Um, I'm going to do it as a course, but I'm also going to do some some very some very easily accessible free videos on my YouTube, um, which is a good way for me to say to you guys, what do you want to see next on my YouTube channel? Um, because it's coming, it's definitely coming. Um, Craig Christie has asked, is it best to stick to one genre while learning to DJ? I don't think it is. Even if you're not going to mix different genres when you actually start DJing, I would just go through and start playing R&B, house, uh, garage, drum and bass, because you'll just you'll just diversify your skill set. Like I've been in a few situations before in clubs and stuff where like I've had to switch it up and I knew how to switch it up, whereas a lot of people might just stick to house music and then they're just... Um, go fishbowl the cells or whatever it's the right word is. So yeah, I would mix it up personally, mate. Um, Steve Rayner music. What is in your mastering chain? This is a full video on mastering, which I will be doing. I promise you, bud. Um, but the fundamentals are of it are: I have an EQ to cut out the bottom end. I have a mono channel. I have an imager to put the bottom end in mono. I have an exciter, which just brightens everything up. But you've got to be really careful not to overdo that. Um, I also have a glue compressor, which just tightens everything up. And then obviously I have a limiter. My limiter at the minute is Invisible Limiter. I think it's called Invisible. Yeah, Invisible Limiter, which is really good transparent mixer. Uh, mixer mastering limiter uh what have we got what software do you use for your decks by logan helps i use um record box but i actually used to use serata and i enjoyed that more but that's another um question john certain how to get a gig i kind of explained this earlier and i'm going to do a full video on this i'd just say network around your local area don't start messaging loads of promoters don't start messaging you know, club owners, don't go down that route, build it organically, and that will follow. Um, I'm going to do a full video on that, but honestly, just see if your friends are having a party, see if your local area, put yourself on the Facebook groups locally, just advertise your services yourself. Um, S-Z-L-E-Z, aka Slezak94, sorry bro if I've butchered your name. My question is, how do you solve power supply in external locations? I'm guessing you're referring to my live streams, and I use a... To be honest, now I've got this FLX6, which you can see in the background there, which is just there for decoration, by the way. It's not actually staying there. Um, I use that, which you don't even need power. My laptop lasts like three hours. So like, I literally turn up with a uh, camera, a drone, a table, my laptop, my decks, and my headphones, and I'm bang, good to go. Um, there is a video on my YouTube on how I do that as well. But I have used powered, um, what they're called, generators. You can get a generator for like £120 in England. So I'd also recommend one of them. Um... James O'Hare, 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 music. How did you get any tips to get in your first gig? I've just started DJing recently alongside producing. Again, mate, just local um, network. I don't mean network as in like message everybody. Like I've said, start with your friends and family and be ready to just play anywhere. Like it doesn't matter if it's a credible house night or a disco night, whatever you want to be. Think about the end goal, but f like focus on the present and be realistic. You know, I was DJing everywhere. And where I used to DJ, if I told some of you guys, you would be like, what, you was DJing there? Like, I've DJed everywhere, like, for nothing. Like, I've lost money DJing, but it's got me where I am today. So my main advice is just be ready to go. Um, Joe Valori, how you doing, bro? Good lad you are, mate. Real good lad. Uh, where do you find your best place to source acapellas? Um, I get sent packs by a guy called Philip West. Um, don't bombard him on Facebook because I think he's stopped doing them. He used to make DIY packs. I don't think he's doing them anymore. So he'd give you like 200 acapellas um, and you you just you just donate a bit of money to him. Um, really good guy. Also, you know, there's all sorts of websites and SoundCloud links where you can find them. I honestly just put in Google. Like if I was looking for, um, I don't know, Joel Corey, Head and Heart, just put that, but just put head and heart acapella into Google, and I guarantee you something will come up. And I don't know if it'll be legit or not, but you'll find it. Um, I'm only rushing because my camera's running out of memory. Do you do your mastering by yourself, DJ Arco? I do. 
But I also have a bit of help sometimes with the mixing and mastering if I get stuck. It depends on what kind of track it is. If it's a big, you know, vocal piano, loads are going on and I'm getting stuck with it, I'll send it out to uh, different people. I really recommend Label Works for Mastering. The cheap, affordable, very good. Alex Powell, the man, is there. He's a legend. Um, what else have I got? Um, Kev Barrett... Ke Kev Barraquet from Australia, who I've been speaking to quite a bit, has asked me, Happy New Year from Australia, bro. Uh, any new releases coming up? Yes, so exclusives here. I have got an official remix of Joel Corey's new song. Um, I wish. I nearly said Head and Heart because I've just been speaking about it. Yeah, I've got an official remix of Joel Corey. Uh, I wish, not Head and Heart, which is mint, and that's probably going to open a lot of doors for me. And I've also got an official collaboration with, this is massive, by the way. This is like the best news I could give you. I've got an official collaboration with Marshall Jefferson and CC Rogers. Oh, my God. If you don't know who they are, you need to understand house music. They are royalty in house music. That is probably the biggest collaboration you could get. They are like legends of the field. Um, and that is coming out on Ultra Music in January. And so is the Joel Corey remix on Atlantic Records. Um, in terms of my own tracks, I'm in a situation at the minute where I'm focusing on other bits and bobs in terms of remixes and stuff just because I rinsed it last year for releases. So I'm just laying low for a little bit, but there is loads in the pipeline. I've got loads done and I've got loads more coming. Um, so yeah, that was the first Q&A with me. I hope that gives some people some information. I hope that helps some people maybe bored at work or sat in the car, you know, just a bit of information, a bit of fun. And yeah, I'm going to do these every week so if you want to ask me a question jump on me on in don't jump on me literally because no just don't do that jump on me on instagram in the dms and ask me what you want i also put it on my stories all the time saying ask me a question and then what i do is i screenshot them all the questions there's loads more on this one by the way i just screenshot them and i put them if they'll load I don't know if you can even see that because it's probably too bright. I put, I load the screenshots on my phone and then I just answer them. So that's how we roll. Bang, bang, bang. Enjoy. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I will see you in the next one.